it would be nice if we could just trust all our mail carriers or you know trust people in general but not everyone is nice and sweet and wants to be nice to everyone else more mail problems it's an issue all across north dakota and one woman wants things to change she called our whistleblower hotline after her check went missing she's had trouble with missing mail before so she assumed the worst Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker explains how the situation ended up working itself out for her, but for many others, they don't have a good outcome. So I was expecting a check and kind of kept checking the mail. Rochelle Caffrey says she waited for weeks on that check, checking the mail several times, but it never came and it seemed all too familiar. I had received a Christmas card from my aunt and it was also a locked mailbox like this in the building. Well, the card was in the mailbox the envelope was ripped open mail problems in our area have come under scrutiny from us after several whistleblowers reported their mail was being taken or delivered to wrong addresses senator heidi heidkamp launched a fix my mail survey to address the problems and senator john hoven recently toured a mail processing plant in west fargo applauding the work that they do to get the mail out to you but despite all that People like Caffrey say there's clearly a problem. These are like your government, government workers that you're supposed to trust with important things in the mail. Like, you know, say you're expecting some kind of money for rent. Well, what happens if that money disappears? Now you can't pay your rent. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. Caffrey ended up finding the check that she waited weeks on. It just was sent to a different address. She plans on going to the post office and asking them why that check was sent to the wrong address. If something like this happened to you, let us know. Call us on our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576 and then leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Coming up after weather in a Valley News Live exclusive, we talked to the man facing murder charges. He says he's not guilty. Plus, one man is in jail tonight after triggering a lockdown in Wahala. But first, if you missed it, the clouds and sunset this evening put on quite a show for us. Robert, does this mean the rain has come and gone away? The rain has ended for the vast majority of us. Still a few sprinkles possible in far northern portions of Minnesota, but all in all, the steady rain is gone, at least for the next couple of days. Live look outside on the Coronado.com Valley Sky Cam, part of the Storm Team Sky Cam Network. Traffic moving along nicely. The pavement has dried on up and temperatures They've taken a nosedive, already down to 44 with a very light wind. We've actually got, dare I say it, a wind chill of 42 degrees out there. A cool night. And Christine mentioned the sunset. I want to get out of the way, and you can see that sunset. After a few evening sprinkles, there it goes, and the clouds cleared on out pretty quickly. Beautiful sunset out there earlier this evening. Temperatures elsewhere across the region. We do have some chilly temperatures, a mix of some 40s and some 50s, right at 50 in Devils Lake, 45 in Langdon, also 45 in Valley City, and then going to 48 in the Sisseton area. Winds have become very light, and they're going to stay light and variable as we head through the overnight hours. In fact, could see some calm winds in a few locations. Already seeing that in a couple of locations. And the combination of the calm winds, the clearing skies, and a lot of moisture around could see some locally dense fog forming as we head through the overnight hours. Still a bit of cloudiness in a few locations underneath those clouds, though. Most of the rain gone again. Can't rule out a few isolated sprinkles, especially up near the uh, Roseau, Lake of the Woods County area, the uh, Bedet area. War Road could see a few sprinkles as well. The green you're seeing elsewhere, just a little interference with our local area radar domes. The steady rain has pushed well off towards the north up into parts of Ontario. And across the national map, some heavy rain continues over parts of Texas, a little bit of higher elevation snows in Colorado and off towards the east. That is the edge of what used to be Hurricane Maria, now Tropical Storm Maria. A closer look at that. It's not looking anywhere near as impressive as it did about a week ago. Peak winds at 70 miles per hour, still moving slowly off towards the north and eventually going to accelerate and move off towards the east and northeast in the next couple of days. For us, as we head through the overnight hours tonight, again, some clearing skies out there, locally dense fog possible as we head towards tomorrow morning. Keep that in mind of traveling late tonight and early tomorrow morning, but that fog gets out of here as we head through the day. We're gonna see plenty of sunshine, a few clouds in the afternoon and evening hours, some of those associated with a weak cool front and winds that start off the day in the west and southwesterly direction will shift around to the north late in the day and that will cool things down for Thursday and Friday. But tomorrow, after we get rid of the fog in the morning and a very chilly start to the day, we'll start to see some sunshine warming on up into the low 60s by noon and later on in the day, 
low 70s with a west southwesterly breeze. Picture of the day, some bright fall colors in New York Mills. Thanks so much to Ashley for sending that in. Going to use that as the backdrop to our seven day forecast. And after a warmer day tomorrow, some low 70s, that cool front cools us down for a couple of days, Thursday and Friday in mid 60s, but some mostly fair skies over the weekend and into next week back into the low and mid 70s. But we will have to contend with a few rumbles of thunder late Saturday and again on Sunday. And we have to remember that wind chill, 42 degrees, is nothing compared yeah. to what's coming in a couple months. And, and tomorrow, you know, you're going to forget all about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Robert. You got it. Well, tonight in the Valley News Live exclusive, a man facing murder charges says he's innocent. Modesto Torres asked Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter, Nicole Johnson, to visit him in jail before his jury trial begins on Thursday. He's accused of being a part of a drug ring where a number of people allegedly conspired to move over 500 grams of meth across North Dakota and Minnesota. It's a drug ring that's believed to have led to the murder of a 24 year old outside the Flying J truck stop in Grand Forks. But Torres says he had nothing to do with the murder and pressure from investigators led others involved in the case to say things that weren't true. If I take a deal and everybody else takes a deal, well then everything gets shoved under the rug and nobody hears the God honest truth. The trial begins on Thursday and is expected to last for about a week. Modesto Torres is just one piece in the puzzle of what is believed to be a large meth trafficking conspiracy operating in the Red River Valley. The entire investigation has led to 13 people being charged in federal court. That includes Crystal Feist who pleaded guilty in February to a number of charges including murder and the use of a firearm. As part of her past plea, Feist admitted to shooting Austin Forsman with a shotgun upon the request of another co-conspirator believed to be Torres. She claims that the motive for the murder was the result of a dispute arising out of the drug trafficking conspiracy. However, the others involved have all either been sentenced or are awaiting sentencing. For more information on the investigation, head to our website, valleynewslive.com. And an investigation is underway after a former inmate of the Cass County Jail makes allegations against a former correctional officer accusing the officer of a sexual offense. The inmate reported the alleged offense on September 9th. Two days later, the Cass County Sheriff's Office asked the North Dakota, North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation to take over the case. Be sure to stick with Valley News Live for further updates on that story. And new information tonight, Valley News Live has confirmed the man that triggered a lockdown and special response team presence in a Northern Valley town. He's now behind bars. Tyler Lafferty was reportedly armed and dangerous and they shut down a residential block where they believed he was hiding. He was located on a farm outside the city and arrested on outstanding warrants. Neighbors in Wahala say they were evacu evacuated from their homes as they searched for Lafferty. Officials from Pemina, Walsh and Cavalier County responded and folks in town say there's never that much police action there. We had the cops stop and ask us to stay close to one side of the house as there was possible gun violence next door. Sheriffs say they never found a gun. Court records show that Lafferty currently has active felony charges related to drugs and theft. A Moorhead man who was facing three felony counts of animal mistreatment after police say he admitted to killing three cats has now changed his not guilty plea. Jalen Greer pleaded guilty for one of those counts and entered an Alfred plea for the other two. Now, an Alfred plea is a guilty plea in a criminal court where the defendant does not admit to the criminal act, but does admit that there is enough evidence to convict him. And because of the Alfred plea, the other two counts of criminal or animal mistreatment, rather, will be dismissed at sentencing. Greer was arrested in March after police say they found a dead cat on his kitchen floor and admitted to killing two others. Greer's sentencing hearing is set for November. The Grand Forks Police Department wants you to know about a high risk sex offender who has moved to town. Police say Juan De, De Leon is now living at 18 North Washington Street. De Leon has two convictions for gross sexual imposition from 2003. And that includes sexual acts with three girls ranging from ages 8 to 12. The Minnesota State Patrol is looking for a driver involved in a hit and run crash with a pedestrian last month. Authorities believe the vehicle was heading east on I-94 near the Brandon exit when that crash happened. The vehicle would have damaged the front passenger side mirror area, so anyone with information should contact the State Patrol at 651-582-1415. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed.
Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. A Fargo girl battling a brain tumor is finally getting her wish. At Thunder Road this evening, Make-A-Wish of North Dakota granted a request for 12-year-old Riley Eliansen to travel to Disney World and meet Princess Moana. Riley has seen the Disney flick over 15 times, so this trip is a pretty big deal. And with all that, Riley's been through being diagnosed with a brain tumor in 2016, the extensive surgery and recovery, and simply working toward being a normal kid. Her family could not be happier to see her thriving. She did things that she never once in her life thought she could do, and she just plowed right through it, just like Riley. I told Riley how strong she is every day, but you know, she doesn't think she is because she knew she had to do it and she just did it. Well, she doesn't realize that sometimes people just don't do what they have to do or what they're going to do. They just crumble, and she did not. Riley goes in for an MRI every six months to make sure the tumor isn't growing. The family plans to make the Disney trip on her birthday. There's a new CW giveaway we want to remind you about. It's a VNL VIP Fargo Force Sweet Night experience on November 4th. All you have to do to register to win is head over to valleynewslive.com, click on the contest tab, and you'll get the chance to hang out with us, the Valley News Live crew, while also enjoying some hockey. The deadline to register is on October 30th at noon. Puerto Rico's dire need. San Juan's mayor says they are in a humanitarian crisis. The president says we're, quote, doing a great job. We'll have the reality check on the relief efforts right after this break.